The wind blows hard today. Across the city line crouched in its deep-sided valley. The air is laced with the smell of clean stone and the dusty purple heather that drapes across the far horizon like a dropped scarf. If I stop and listen, I can almost hear, faintly, like the faded thread of a song from an older age, the cries of foxes that dance in the moorland coverts and the blurred whirring of kestrels riding the soaring thermals. I walk over the crest of the hill and start down into town, past the intricate raggle of little shops that embroider the roadside and spill their treasures onto the pavements. All the world is here, laid out in patchworks of drenched and brilliant colour, dazzling pyramids of oranges from Morocco like clotted sun, topiary broccoli, dark green flounced cabbages and rich spinach, feathery plumes of coriander and gleaming scarlet apples bursting with temptation. Oh, we want for nothing. Watermelon, tender papaya, smooth languorous mangoes and luminous persimmons. Sometimes they're figs. Their smart suede skins, the colour of bruises, hiding gritty red flesh so sweet it tastes like the perfumed breath of angels. I eat them with good Greek bread, baked by serious Ukrainian men, craftsmen, and I smile, thinking, in this town, we can eat like princes for a pauper's fee. I fill my bag with fruit and wander on, window shopping, my eye caught by the fabric shops that burst with rolls and bolts of lace and lame, metallic and dangerous as deep water with satin, crepe and polyester crusted with sequins, bouillon and tiny mirrors, foil stamped, hologrammed and photo printed, fabric patterned in every possible way, striped and checked, hazy with impossible flowers, stark with calligraphic motifs repeating and repeating unknown phrases in an unknown tongue. Brilliant as some dead caliph's treasure, the windows blaze with textile gems, sapphire and emerald, ruby, heavy turquoise and white that glimmers with the blue sheen of Chomolungmar's distant snows. One window is all pinks, from summer's dusky rose through bubblegum shocking to a shell pink so faint it's hardly breathing. And best of all, so beautiful it makes me sigh. A half unrolled length of pure gleaming silk that fades from blood red to the pink of a desert sunset and back again. But I walk on, down into the valley in the secret stone puzzle that's the city. Above me, far overhead, wing-driven clouds unfurl like great tattered banners, whipping through the blue like flying prayers. They twist and roil like a time-lapse film, cinematic, impossible and always with us in this place so dominated by vast, untamable skies. Stark against the huge backdrop of the clouds stand the monumental sandstone buildings, the wool barons' proud and unflinching legacy, palaces of trade that couldn't be built now, will never be built again by modern hands no longer trained to patience and the skills that turned the primeval bones of earth into carvings as dense and intricate as nature herself. Glancing up, I see faces, plants and creatures made from stone, decorating every cornice, edge and buttress. Petrified sailing ships in full rig and portraits of adamantine queens in medallions set on the slab sides of crumbling forgotten towers. Camels stride past pyramids cut out of stone by men who would never see such things for themselves. In the hundred niches that pock the great cliff of City Hall, blind saints and craggy kings gaze into nothing bound by masonry ropes and sandstone swags of ivy. On other walls, griffins perch on acanthus twists and arabesques, curlicues and cutwork so deep you can stick your fingers in it, foam, twine and snake-up spires that reach greedily for the golden light that daily turns their crushed crystals to living amber for a few brief moments of glory. I go to the wool exchange that temple to the trade that made the city famous. High up under the canopy of its arching ribbed roof that vaults to a ridge like a medieval galleon upturned, beached on a city street. Painted wooden archangels crowned in antique gold pray with knotted, steepled hands. Once, they were mute witnesses to the swirl and play of money on the trading floor beneath them. Now the city seraphim watch ordinary people buying books and drinking coffee, but they don't mind. 
they stretched their stiff, gilded wings over everyone, young and old, and were all in their charge. And I sit down for a minute, amongst the books, and think of the town, stretching out and away from here, dark and bright, beautiful and ugly. The high-sided, wind-scoured canyons of the deserted mills, telling their silent stories of what has been and what will be. Deaths, the births, the fighting, and the love. All the humanity of it, gathered from every place in the world, and all of us, everything, under the infinite night sky now. A silver twist of crescent moon, fragile as a girl's first earring, visible even over the streetlight's sodium glare. And I think... This is where we live, in this stone maze, in this northern city, under the terrible stars, and we belong. <laughs>